We must recognize that in the 21st century, in the wealthiest country in the history of the world, economic rights are human rights. And that is what I mean by democratic socialism. Presidential candidate Bernie Sanders gave a full-throated defense of democratic socialism yesterday, explicitly laying out why, in his view, it's the only way to defeat Donald Trump. Sanders remains in the top tier of Democratic candidates and Republicans who think many voters will blanch at the very label socialist keep running around saying that they would love to be running against a guy who is a real dyed-in-the-wool socialist. A lot of people aren't scared of that word anymore. A recent poll found that 4 in 10 Americans say they would prefer living in a socialist country, including 55% of women between 18 and 54. Sanders shouldn't have a problem getting those votes. It's the folks not in that group the speech seemed to be directed to. And joining me now is Senator Bernie Sanders, 2020 presidential candidate. Here's my, here's my first question. Why does it matter, at the end of the day, the term? Like, the agenda is the agenda, the program's the program. People might like it, they might not like it. You're waving your finger at me, but what, why, <laughs> does, why does the term matter? Why even fight about it? Okay, I will tell you why, Chris. You know, I'm thinking that over the last 40, 45 years, there have been 20 some odd elections and every candidate who runs for office said, we need to improve health care. We need to improve education. We need to improve the environment. But not a lot happens. Today, the average American worker is earning in inflation accounted for dollars the same amount of money as a worker did 43 years ago. Today, you have massive levels of income and wealth inequality, three families owning more wealth than the bottom half of America. Now, why does that happen? Is it that the candidates are liars? I don't think so. Not in most cases. In many cases, they are very decent people trying to do their best. But what we have to recognize, and the reason that I use the term democratic socialism, is because I believe that we need policies that protect working families and not just the 1%. But in addition to that, it is imperative to understand why so little progress is being made economically. And that is, and I think my campaign is unique in saying this, if you want real change in America, if you want health care for all, if you want real climate change reform, if you want education opportunities available for all, we have got to take on the ruling class of America. Right. That is Wall Street, the drug companies, the insurance companies, the fossil fuel industry, the military industrial complex. And what I am saying is that I, as president, can't do it alone. The only way we bring about substantial change in this country is when millions of people stand up and fight for that change. And that's why our campaign is called Us, Not Me, because no president, no right. matter how well-intentioned, could do it alone. Well, let me ask you this, though. So, so one of the, the sort of touchstone points in the speech is about FDR and the New Deal and, and the Economic Bill of Rights. And again, I, I would agree with you that well, his critics called him a socialist, and in by today's term, Duba called socialist. But FDR didn't call himself a socialist. The socialists of the time said that he was peddling pale pink pills, that he was basically a sellout capitalist. He probably did that for a reason, right? I mean, that was a political judgment by FDR about his own efficacy. Why does the word matter more than the agenda? Because it is imperative for people to understand, look, a lot of people are going to say a lot of good things. But for two reasons, I think the word democratic socialism is relevant. Because if you are serious about, A, defeating Trump's authoritarianism, mm -hmm. which, by the way, is an international phenomenon, you have to do what Roosevelt did and say, you know what, I am taking on the ruling class. And you remember, I mentioned this yesterday, and these people hate me. <laughs> and I welcome their hatred. In other words, you cannot go forward unless we are prepared to take on incredibly yeah. powerful special interests. There is no shortcut uh, around that. And second of all, when I use the word democratic socialism, what I mean is not that, hey, we've got to improve the health care system. I mean that economic rights are human rights. People are entitled to health care, to education, to a clean environment, to retirement security, to decent housing, 
This is not just some abstract idea. Freedom of speech is what America is about. I believe that economic rights must also be about uh, what uh, America is about. And by the way, you mentioned in your preface that Republicans are just uh, chomping at the bits they to run that. against— They say That's what they say. They say they're very yeah. excited about this and that you're, you're going to scare off people, and this they would love nothing more than a run yeah. against social. Just take a look at some of the polls there. We're beating Trump in some cases by 10 points. But the point here it's is— early. Uh, It is absolutely <laughs> early. I accept that's that. Not, I yeah. accept that. Okay. But uh, the other point that I would make, Chris, is— that we live in many respects in a socialist society today if the definition of that is massive federal group of people. Yeah. Problem right now is you have, as you know, Martin Luther King Jr. talked about, we got socialism for the rich, but rugged free, individual free enterprise yep. uh, for, for working people. We have to turn that around on its head. You, you just said something, you've, you've talked a fair amount about sort of international authoritarianism as a sort of international force. Um, and and I, I thought about it a little bit in the context of what the president said yesterday about, you know, welcoming uh, a Russian help. I mean, first question is, what is your position? If you were offered help from a foreign government or foreign adversary, would you call the FBI? Is that your position? It, it is illegal. <laughs> so, yes, I would. And I guess my second question is, are you worried about that aspect in this campaign? And, you know, we, we talked about the top. It's not just Russia, but like the Saudis, for instance. You've been very outspoken about the U.S.-backed uh, Saudi war in Yemen. Uh, the Saudis have tons of interest and a lot of investment in Donald Trump being the president of the United States. He's given them free reign. Is it a live issue to you, <laughs> the fact that if Bernie Sanders were the nominee, like the Saudis probably would like to see you defeated? You think so? <laughs> yeah, I, I would agree with you. Look, here is what I think we should be very nervous about, above and beyond your legitimate concerns. And that is, we have a president who doesn't believe in the Constitution or doesn't understand the Constitution, thinks he is above the law. And I think that what we are likely to see, I hope I'm wrong, but we are likely to see is a president who will merge the agencies of the federal government and his position as president and combine that with his position right. as a candidate. And we should be very mindful of that. And I think we should all be uh, watchful as to how he proceeds. Well, I guess that's the question is what to be done about it. I think you're right. I mean, that that seems like a live issue. We've saw today the the, the um, letter from the Office of Special Counsel about the Hatch Act violations, which is right. designed. Do you think that is that, I mean, what I hear from you, do you think that's important, actually? That's not yeah, just I do. a trivial I mean, thing. It, and it's not just Ms. Conway. You know, it is, I don't think, you know, I don't think in his own mind he sees much different. He's a candidate. He's a president. What's the problem? Uh, use all of the resources you can to win, in addition to the fact that he is a pathological liar and, all, and that he will have the backing of a lot of very, very wealthy people in this country, including his own uh, personal wealth. So, yeah, it is... Uh, in my view, uh, a real issue of concern. But it comes down, l let me respond and tell you what I think the antidote is. And the antidote is a strong progressive message that says to the working people of this country and to the young people that now is the time in this unprecedented moment in American history for people to become involved in the political process. And you go, I go back to the word democratic socialism. It's not the same old, same old. Yeah. We got to stand up, we got to fight back, and we have to beat oligarchy, and we have to defeat authoritarianism and Donald Trump as well. All right, Senator Bernie Sanders, who's a senator from Vermont, 2020 presidential candidate, who will be on that debate stage one of the two nights, 13 days from now. Thanks for making time. Thank you. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.